I mean, it's almost like a sales cliche to say that people do business with people and they do business with people they know, like, and trust. But, but it's been borne out again and again. Welcome back, Strategic Selling Group members and all those B2B salespeople out there, sales leaders and so on. You're here with the Talking Sales series and I have Kean McLaughlin with me. Hi, John. Nice to be here. Great to have you back, Ken. Last time we had a discussion, you talked about EQ versus IQ in sales. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great subject. I'd like to explore it a bit more and get more insight from you on what it really means to salespeople. Sure. Uh, there's, there's a lovely quote from uh, Zig Ziglar um, that some people may have heard before, which is that logic makes people think and emotion makes people act. And I think that's uh, it's really, really true. And I see it uh, borne out every day in the conversations I have with key decision makers. Uh, when I ask them, why do they make decisions? Um, it's not just cut and dried, black and white criteria. A lot of it relates to um, things in relation to emotion. Uh, we liked them, we trusted them, they understood us, they took the time to listen. Um, we felt a strong cultural fit, we felt a strong affinity. And it, it struck me that so many of these things are on the EQ side as distinct from on the IQ side. And, and as, a, as salespeople, I guess, we need to really think about that. What does it mean from an EQ point of view? How do, it, it really comes down to our own behavior, doesn't it? Well, it does. And I must admit, it's not something I really thought about in my own sales career. So if I go back you know, to the 10 or 15 years that I spent uh, carrying a quota or managing a sales team, I never consciously thought about the importance of EQ. But it relates to things like how curious you are. It relates to things like how good of a listener you are, um, your ability to uh, be a good judge of character, to handle people who are maybe um, you know a little bit harder to get on with, you, how you display empathy, all of these things, which are soft skills and therefore easy to dismiss, but incredibly important in terms of actually um, conducting certainly B2B sales. Well, based on the last discussion we had, right, and plus this one, yeah. it, it's, it's absolutely vital. You're not going to be successful, very unlikely to be successful, all if, if you have a high intelligence but you have no ability to really have empathy with the, the people you're talking to and manage your own behavior correct I mean it's almost like a sales cliche to say that people do business with people and they do business with people they know like and trust but but it's been borne out again and again and I think some of the stats are really interesting there's some work that's been done by dr. Travis Bradbury and he talks mm -hmm. about the fact that 90% uh, of top performers are high in EQ um, the increase in EQ every for every point of EQ you go up leads to a thousand dollar increase in your and your likely earnings um, almost all of the top leaders are high in EQ not all but a, a, the vast majority so, so let me address the question what do we as salespeople and sales leaders do about this yeah because the, the question I get often is if somebody uh, at this point in time haven't got a high level of EQ yeah should they not be in sales? Well, this is the, I think it's the old dog, new trick question. Um, and I think it's a really interesting one because uh, IQ tends to be fixed. And so it's, it, I think, as far as I know, it's impossible to fundamentally change your IQ. But EQ is different. EQ actually is something that you absolutely can work on. And, and the plasticity of the brain allows us to learn new behaviors and then start to build those into habits. Um, to focus on things like... Um, our ability to embrace change, to focus on things like our ability to be better listeners, to use our two ears and one mouth in that ratio, to focus on things like how we do our research and how we then use that to have better conversations with people. That's eminently learnable stuff. And so if you decide that oh, my EQ is not at a particularly high level, uh, I'm just going to dismiss that, then I think A, you're missing a huge opportunity and B, you may well be um, and putting yourself in an awkward position over the next couple of years of your career. So as a salesperson, if I really uh, n recognize I need to improve my EQ, there's things I can do out there. The first thing I'd do would be just Google it, and then I'd start to read, and I'd start to research, and I'd start to understand it. And then maybe I would ask some people who are in my peer group, or maybe even some customers. That, or that a mentor. Would, exactly. To just give me some feedback. What, what do you think I do well? Wh where have I got some gaps? What could I work on? And I'd also look at other people around me who, who I think are strong in that area, and I'd try and understand what it is they're doing well. And then again, try and mirror or emulate that. And for the sales leaders out there, if they've got people with moderate levels of EQ... What should they be doing? Look, it's eminently coachable, um, but I think it's it, it's about really taking the time to sit down and help them understand why. Because I'm not going to really focus on changing a skill set or a behavior unless I understand the knock-on effect of that. Yeah, and if the knock-on effect of that is you can build deeper and more meaningful relationships with your customers, you can shorten sales cycles, you can grow deal values, you can do all of that, then, yeah, absolutely, I'll take the time.
Okay, so the, the message, uh, bottom line message, I guess, is we really need to think about EQ, what it means to us and so on. We need to uh, then focus on understanding what our own EQ is, or as a sales leader, sales manager, yep. understanding the EQ of all the members of their team, Absolutely. and working on coaching and developing an improvement of that EQ, you'll have resounding results in the sales they make. You will. Your customers will love you for it as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, uh, look at your EQ. Think about it. Um, it's really important for your success in your career. Uh, and a sales leader, you can change your team and the performance your team's getting by really focusing on coaching better EQ in the group. So, Kian, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, John. I look forward to getting together very soon. Look forward to it. Thank you.